Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Oh, so, so, can we start now? Inshallah, it's five now. Yeah, inshallah, yes. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala shofi al-amdiya wa al-musameen. Wa ala alihi wa sahihi ajma'in. Subhanaka la ayuna lana illa ma allamtana inna ka anta al-alim al-hakim. Rabbana zidna ayuna rabbi shuhli sadri wa yasirli amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I would like to welcome Salva Farhad and all participants on Zoom or Facebook to our weekly Tarbiyah session for today. Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah for all the blessings that he has given us. And today, Alhamdulillah, we are given the opportunity to get together again after Ramadan to continue our efforts in seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This program is conducted in collaboration with Aris University. Aris University has been running for over 15 years doing structured Islamic studies courses, both at site and online, and operates in four countries worldwide. Having hundreds of alumni doing meaningful da'wah across the globe, the globe. we also have Quran, Arabic, personal development, and leadership programs. Participants are encouraged to follow us on social media to get the latest updates on our programs. You can follow aris.edu on Facebook or aris underscore Malaysia on Instagram. You can also join our Telegram group for updates on our announcements, activities, and courses. Inshallah, today we will discuss on the tips to continue the Ramadan momentum with Ustaz Farhad. After that, if the time permits, we will have Q&A session. To have your questions ready, you can post your question in the chat. As a reminder, uh, Ustazah do not, um, does not answer fake related questions. Uh, one final rem reminder before we start, this is a sister-only session. And if you happen to be a brother, please pass your device to your wife, your sister, or any other females around you. Without further ado, I pass on the session to Ustaz Farhat to proceed with our lesson today. Over to you, Ustaz Farhat. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem amma ba'd. Fa'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ir-rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزلوا عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم تعادون نحن أولياءكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور الرحيم Beloved sisters in Islam, I welcome you with the greetings of peace and mercy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and the choicest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah blesses us once again and drenches us once again into the barakah, into the rahmah, into the mercy, into the forgiveness of Ramadan, similar to that, so that we can continue grabbing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. Ameen. So I hope and I pray you all are fine, my dear sisters, and I hope that you are in the best of health and the best of iman and rising iman, although it's, it, it, is, it is a bit difficult to carry, carry on the same momentum like that of Ramadan. Ramadan is a, a, a very, very blessed zone, but we can always pray like 
what the Sahaba did six months prior to Ramadan and six months after Ramadan. So yeah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the same. Uh, Ramadan came, gifted us with its presence, a huge gift of Allah's mercy, Allah's baraka, rahma, grace, his kindness, his forgiveness. Indeed, it's a real mighty gift, a very mighty feeling. Isn't it, sisters, in the blessed zone of Ramadan? For didn't you hear brothers and sisters passing away just at the doorsteps of Ramadan? We appreciate the invitation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be in this blessed zone, in this blessed space. For, you know, we, we as humans appreciate with examples when we, when we learn from examples of, you know, life stories especially. So let me share with you all two incidences. One of a person, a young 23-year-old who passed away just at the doorsteps of Ramadan. And the other is a couple, a young couple that passed away just yesterday. So, but yes, we begin with the real life incident of one 23 year old young Muslim brother who died just a couple of days before Ramadan. And this young boy, was left for the first time by his parents. His parents went out on a journey just for three days, it seems. And this boy was alone in his house along with his brother. This 23-year-old, as he was preparing for Ramadan, as he was, he was scheduled to get married in December 22. And he was talking over the phone to his would-be wife, while he was on the telephonic conversation, suddenly he screams aloud because of maybe a very severe pain in the heart. He is in Dubai and his fiancée is in Bombay talking to him. And this girl, she is so scared and she says she... She panics because, the, because he is, you know, calling out and he's screaming out because of the pain. She calls up the parents and she says he's in need of help. And by the time the brother approaches, they come back, they reach out to him. And by the time they rush him in the ambulance to the hospital, he is declared dead. Out of cardiac arrest, maybe. Allahu alam. A very healthy, normal person who's never had any health issues before in life. This is the story in short of a 23-year-old young Muslim boy. Subhanallah. Death is glaring on our faces. The angel of death is almost there. We know that, my dear sisters. This was just before Ramadan. Shouldn't we be so thankful to Allah that Allah gave us that opportunity of Ramadan? Now we need to keep praying that, Ya Allah, please accept our deeds. May it be a, an accepted Ramadan for me. Amin. Now coming to the other incident that happened just yesterday. And this was a 23-year-old young girl. And for those who are from Bombay, she was an ex-IAS student, a very bright, a nice student. She, along with her husband, met with a fatal bike accident and then was, were run away over by a bus. And they breathed their last yesterday. Just 23-year-old Hafiza Sueba Supariwala Subhanallah, all the vivid memories that I have of this little young student, so lively, Subhanallah. And more than that, I remember what an ambitious mother her mother was. Such a diligent mother, 
on her toes to give the best to her children, both of dunya and akhira. And imagine the dreams upon, the dreams were so fresh of this young couple. Just a day before the husband arrived from Dubai and they were in, they, they just had some time together, subhanallah, and met, met with this fatal accident and died on the spot. The mom, the mother, Sister Fauzia Supariwala was such an ambitious person for the degree, for the students, for the, for, for the schooling, the education, the higher education for this dunya. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Her, but you know, sisters, when I spoke to her over the phone, her faith roared louder than the pain of her loss as the two bodies of her daughter and her son-in-law were not yet received. They were not yet recovered because you know, the usual process of post-mortem takes time. She not only spoke, but she sounded so composed over the phone, so very same ambitious for the akhira of her daughter and her son-in-law, her daughter Sueba. I, in fact, I called her to console her, but she stood there so full of sabar, so full of sabar and contentment with the decree of Allah, almost drenched in sabar, asking Allah to pray for her two kids and pleading Allah to be pleased with her. Subar, sabar and contentment personified. And I'm wondering, you know, and we wonder when we see such heroes, where does this sabar come from? Where does this sabar comes, come from? Yes, indeed, it comes from the faith. As if she can see Jannah, as if she can see her daughter and her son-in-law, you know, passing through all the stages with all the destinations, like a young couple, that attained martyrdom. Subhanallah. All she uttered was, Radhi to Billahi Rabba, Bil Islami Dina, O Bi Muhammadin Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I am pleased with my Lord. Subhanallah. A real life hero. Sister Fazia, we are proud of you. May Allah grant you more and more and give you better than your loss in dunya and akhira. Ameen. And we sincerely pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah forgive inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. May Allah forgive the, the, those who have called, those whom he has called. May Allah have mercy on them, pardon them, be generous to them, cause them to enter the wide gates, wash them with water and with snow and hail, clean them of their transgression as, as white cloth is clean of stains. Give them an abode better than their home of this dunya. Take them into paradise. Protect them from the punishment of the grave and from the punishment of the hellfire. And reunite them as a happily married couple in Jannatul Firdaus Al-Ala. And that dua goes for all our dead. Kul mu'minin mu'minat, kul muslimin muslimat, all the past ones May Allah grant all of them forgiveness and may Allah keep them away from the fire of the hell. Ameen. So my dear sisters, each part passing day, isn't each passing day a nyama to earn rewards and make the best of each and every moment? Isn't it a great lesson for us to learn from, from these incidences that we see? When we see death, you know, the angel of death is yawning right in front of us, just waiting from the izn of Allah to command so that he can gulp us down. And yet, whenever we hear about the death of someone, it hits us so hard. It's so painful, especially our loved ones, our near and dear ones. But that is what Islam teaches us. That is what sabar is. That is what contentment is. 
subhan allah subhan allah you know my dear sisters when i was a young child i used to wonder how do people die and when they die how do the other family members have sabar how is it possible because you know it seems that one can be so broken so shattered but then when i studied the qadar of allah when i realized learned little more grew up more you know into islam and realized that this is the qadar allah this is how allah operates and allah is the one who grants sabar subhan allah i i fell in love all over again with allah subhanahu wa taala i fell in love all over again with the deen of islam and i wonder how the other people you know how do they uh how do they fathom how do they understand how do they relate to death of a loved one and a near and dear one subhanallah inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun so coming back to the fact that allah gave us this opportunity to be there in ramadan we appreciate the invitation by allah to be in this space alhamdulillah we were given another chance to drench ourselves into his rahma into his mercy hopefully we have another chance all over again inshallah and i hope and i pray that most of us have benefited from this presence in our lives some have experienced great levels of gratitude some have reached the peaks and the pinnacles of contemplation some of have done that have gone into the depths of tadabbur of the quran some have picked up pearls of wisdom from the shuyukh that we have heard while while they taught us the lessons while others have enjoyed the qiyam qiyamul lail the tahajjud the tarawi reaching heights of enlightenment some have tasted the sweetness of iman some tried reaching the qalbun salim forgetting forgiving all controlling the fit of anger tying the beast of the ego trying hard to please the almighty some have tried to tame the amara and have had a good grasp over it mastering the courage to courage to fight the amara to reach the mutmainna the content soul some blessed with new insights new experiences rich like the rich farmers with new fruits and flowers growing into their own fields subhanallah we are all rich with new harvest totally new blossomed fruits and flowers the fragrance of which will last at least till the next ramadan but my dear sisters we've got to cherish all this we've got to maintain all this we've got to hold on to all this and we don't want to let go perhaps if we go back to the same example that i had given of the gold mine you know how about a person who's who's working in the gold mine and find so much gold right surely we've managed to draw a lot of gold from this ramadan enriching ourselves and our families we have especially in the last 10 days and the nights allowed ourselves to beg to allah seeking his forgiveness allahumma inna ka afu wa tuhibbul afu wa fa'fu anni thus gained from the flow of his rahma his grace so he has covered all our imperfections our sins our faults in fact we pray that the al afu al afu ghafurur rahim he has wiped away all our sins and we are as new as as and as clean as the new bonds now so all the beautiful spiritual experiences we have had the spiritual highs the intense gratitude the shukar the sabar the profound spiritual experience don't dampen that fire my dear sisters so today's program is all about this don't dampen that fire the high that you've already reached set it ablaze so that others get the spark and i repeat that 
don't dampen that fire, my dear sisters. And if we've got to keep the baton on, if we've got to keep got to keep the fire burning, it requires efforts. It's difficult though, we understand, because Ramadan has its own baraka, of course. But then at least let's not fall down lower than what we were before Ramadan. Hopefully we, don't, we do not fall down to sinful ways. For example, if we have reached 90 in Ramadan, for example, if our Iman, if our Tawakkul, all that had reached 90 in Ramadan, and maybe before Ramadan it was 50, so at least we try not to fall below 50, 60. Dangling between 60 and 90 is good, inshallah. Right? If we were to give a rating from 0 to 100, if you are going to be dangling between 60 and 90, it's good, inshallah. We keep striving. We keep striving hard, inshallah. Now imagine, sisters, if a person having taken all the trouble of digging the mine, the gold mine, acquiring all the gold, now goes back and puts it back into the same place or just throws it away. What do you say of such a person, my dear sisters? Taking all the effort to, to you know, clean the gold, find the gold, purify the gold, have the gold in the hand and then just goes back and throws it away or just doesn't care about it. What do you say about such a person? Well, only an insane person would do that, right? We protect our treasures, isn't it? We protect our treasures. We value our deeds. All the time, energy, effort, hunger, thirst, tiredness was an investment. The standing up late at night was an investment. Never meant to be wasted. Ramadan was a training period, my dear sisters. For, you know, if we have the effects, the fruits of it are meant to last the entire year. The fragrance of that is last to, you know, is meant to last the entire year until next Ramadan. And the efforts to retain this commitment, this consistency, this persistence is all this program is about today. And it's all about istikama. It's all about steadfastness. How we continue the momentum after Ramadan. We don't just let it go. Little things here and there we practice and somehow, inshallah, we live up to our expectations. We have a plan. We have a concrete, strong, solid plan so that inshallah, we can live up to it, inshallah. Because I know, I know my dear sisters, and it's, and, it's, and it's quite natural. It may happen that, you know, some of us are already feeling the iman dip or the loss of barakah. Some of, our, some of us are feeling lack of enthusiasm to go ahead and do good deeds. You know, we, we find that the same enthusiasm is fading away at it, as it used to be to stand up for Taraweeh and Tahajjud during Ramadan. So some of us are really feeling the Ramadan blues, the post-Ramadan low. As some of the sisters, you know, have actually messaged me that, yes, I'm already feeling the Ramadan low now, you know, thanking me for having the, this class. So may Allah accept it and may Allah recharge us all over again. May Allah help us to recharge our batteries and our spirits, inshallah. So let's make an effort, an action plan to ensure that we are strong enough. Rather, we equip ourselves enough to battle that attack from the shaitan. So here are 13 tips, my dear sisters. And it can be more than that if you want. So here are 13 tips to carry on the Ramadan momentum. Inshallah, inshallah, I'm sure you can come up with many more smarter ones, inshallah. So let us look at these and then inshallah, you can add more to your list, hopefully. May Allah make it possible for us to do our best in the 11 months, the remaining time that, you know, we are out of Ramadan also. 
the very first point you know is that alhamdulillah alhamdulillah we are so hopeful of allah you know allah is how we think of him the kind of hopes we have with allah allah proves to be like that if we hope and we pray and we struggle and we strive to you know make allah happy to please allah insha allah allah will be pleased with us my dear sisters so we enter into shawwal with a very positive mindset that insha allah insha allah our sins are forgiven but of course confidence is good but overconfidence is from the shaitan so we've got to be careful yes you know in the last 10 nights we heard of the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that are three hadith which say man kama ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban the first is man sama ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban gufira lahum so so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said one who fasts in ramadan and has an uh, you know with introspection and pleading to allah and seeking forgiveness inshallah all his sins will be forgiven that is the first chance allah gives us then the second is if still the sins are not forgiven then allah, then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man qama ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban gufira law then the hadith continues that those who stand up for salah in qiyam if they stand up and they pray and genuinely seek uh, uh, repentance from allah inshallah allah will forgive their sins but it, but still even fasting has not got our sins forgiven even standing up late at night has not gotten our sins forgiven then the third one the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about lailatul qadr that one who stands up in the night in lailatul qadr searches the lailatul qadr and sincerely seeks repentance inshallah will have all his or her sins forgiven three great chances we have had and inshallah we hope and we pray that allah has forgiven all our sins so much hope so much positivity allah gives us the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has promised us my dear sisters and what is the example of the sahaba they used to pray six months before before ramadan and they used to pray six months after ramadan so what they used to pray six months after ramadan that oh allah please accept our deeds so that is what we ought to do we constantly pray to allah allah accept the deeds the broken the small the little you know the deeds that we have done please accept that oh allah so we pray to allah subhanahu wa taala for the next six months and my dear sisters for the sahaba the central part of their lives was ramadan so they prayed six months before and they prayed six months after so once the six months passed away that that would be six months before the next ramadan so they used to play for a long life so that they reach ramadan subhanallah that is what we also ought to do now coming to the second important point in the midst of all this when we are praying when we are paying attention to all this you know when we are constantly making duas to allah subhanahu wa taala we have to remember one thing in mind that the shaitan is constantly going to whisper shaitan is constantly going to tell us you know and deviate us on the wrong path but we have to be firm like allah mentions in this beautiful verse of the glorious quran in chapter 4 verse number 119 and allah says like the shaitan is speaking and the shaitan is saying i will mislead them what is the shaitan saying the shaitan is swearing by allah and saying i will mislead them and i will create in them false desires i will order them to slit their ears of the cattle to deface the fair nature created by allah whoever forsaking allah takes shaitan for a friend has of a surety suffered a loss that is manifest in the next verse in 120 allah says satan makes them promises and creates in them false desires 
but Satan's promises are nothing but deception. Right? Subhanallah. What a verse full of warning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us what the shaitan told us. Now let us just see what are the three promises the shaitan has made in this verse. Okay? Three words. The beginning of the verse. Wala udil lannahum. That is the first one. Second. Wala umanni yannahum. Second. And the third. Wala amurannahum. These are the three promises that the shaitan has taken from Allah. He's swearing to Allah and he says, I swear to Allah that I will mislead them. Absolutely misguide them. Imagine, I will misguide them, the shaitan is saying. Now, you know, my dear sisters, it is, a, it is such an intelligent whisper of the shaitan. It's not so easy for us to recognize it's a very master plan. He's a crook, you know, a super intelligent being, so to say, who knows how to, how to make use of, of, you know, us, misleading us. The shaitan is like, I will indeed, I will, instead of your guidance, Allah, I will misguide them. I will for sure do that, he's saying. Now, how does the shaitan work? Now, there are two extremes. Various options, but let me speak of the two common extremes that the shaitan uses, okay? How does the shaitan come to us and whisper, Allah is so merciful, he understands. It's, he's forgiving, so come on, it's okay, it's just one sin, not a big deal. Auzubillah. Okay, now another extreme. If you are, you know, if, if you are confused now, so what does the shaitan say? Yeah, exactly. So a story of Barsisa. Now, now, now the other extreme. If a person is little, you know, doubtful, confused, then, then the shaitan comes from another angle and says, Allah is so angry already at you. You know, it's so difficult to follow all fasting after all the praying of fasting, everything you've done. You can't carry on this. You know, no matter what you do, you're doomed. Anyways, you're doomed to hell. So you got to watch this movie. Now, come on, go ahead, go enjoy this life. Everybody does it. It's fine. Auzu billah. May Allah save and may Allah protect. So my dear sisters, he is very, very strategic. His method are so well planned. You know how he deludes you is different from how he deludes me. For each one, he has a different plan. He is a master. He is a... He is really too smart and too intelligent. He uses your circumstances. He uses your friends, your personality, your life, your feeling, your emotions, your experiences, your temptations, your weaknesses to mislead you. And similarly, he uses my circumstances, my personality, my friends, you know, my temptations, my experience, my emotions, my, my weaknesses, my life and my feelings to mislead me. He is doing constant surveillance, constant attacking us, constant observing us. You know, what is the time that I slip? He knows. That is why when we have the phone in our hands, we should begin with Auzubillah. Begin with Bismillah. Don't touch the phone unless you don't say Auzubillah, I'm in a shaitan rajim. Because one wrong slip and you can go on the wrong side, Auzubillah. And this is for all of us mature individuals. We cannot be too, you know, confident of ourselves because we know that the shaitan is always there. And when you slip and when I slip, you know, that is when he starts. You know, if he notices that you're becoming better after Ramadan, you're sleeping early on time, you're getting up for fajr, you're doing your doha properly, you're taking care of your tahajjud, slowly he will whisper something and, you know, slowly he will, 10 minutes before, sometime before you're about to do your tahajjud, he will come and he will e either make you doze off, either take you on the wrong, wrong website, or just tell you, okay, after some time, after some time, later on, it's, there's, there's a lot of time more. And that's how the shaitan will delude you. If, especially if you have started as a routine, you're keeping up with the Quran. If you have started giving charity, he will come to you in many ways. So beware of this master planner. 
Now that was the first. Vala udil lan na hum. That is what I will take them to Dalla Dalalam Baida. That is take them to the wrong path. I will mislead them. Now the second. What is the second in this verse? That is mentioned. Vala umani yan na hum. Tamanna umani yan na hum is what. I will give them false desires and false hopes. This is an even more powerful attack, my dear sisters. I will fill them up with false desires, false hope. How the attitude will be? How relax? It's okay. All are doing it. You know, there's so much time still. You have a you have a long life to go. You can do it later. It's okay if you missed a couple of salah. It's fine. You're not just landing up in hell now. Just one more movie is fine. You don't. It's okay. Everybody is doing it. Come on. Whether it is this, whether it is hanging out with the wrong friends, or whether it is you know backbiting, lying, cheating, whether it's giba, you know it's it's okay. I know I do. I I I am doing giba, but that's but that's the truth, and they deserve it. They you know how these people are. Auzu billah. You know, justifying one act after the other, and haven't you heard the youth say, "I need this. I want to be happy. I want to feel good. I want this car. I deserve this car. I don't know. I, I, I need to get this." Your desires, it becomes an obsession. Hopes and desires, wishes, wanting for more and more. Al hakumat takasur. willing to do anything to attain that desire and then you know and then the final attack of the shaitan what is the final attack wala amurannahum then i will command them amr the shaitan is saying first he is going to mislead then he is going to create the desires in the minds and the heart and then once you are already enslaved to the shaitan then then the ability to decipher right from the wrong is lost then you're so full of that obsession by hook or by crook i want i want that you know and you have heard of that just do it auzu billah so i will command them wala amu ranna ho and i will command them so it's no more waswas no more confusion no more doubt i will command them when you become his total slave complete submission to him he has hypnotized you you will do it and and the kind of attitude is who cares just do it that's the attack of the shaitan my whims my desires become greater than allahu akbar so who is akbar in surah jasiya like allah says you know the hawa has become ilah who is the god then the hopes and desires become god not not in the form of an idol but the hidden god inside here in, in the in the heart that idol that is sitting that is sitting there of desires of hawa that is the ilah that needs to be broken because allah does not like any competitors here inside that needs to be broken have you seen the one who takes his hawa his temptations his desires as god allah says in surah jasiya subhanallah even though the person has knowledge even though the person has ilm the person may be knowing the verses of the quran the person may be having knowledge of islam yet you know there is no hidayah allahu akbar may it never happen so yes don't you know the greatest of the knowledge you know people have and yet there is no hidaya shaitan has so much knowledge didn't he he has seen allah subhanahu wa taala he has seen the angels himself he spoken to allah direct conversation he knows the truth he saw the angels coming at badr didn't he sisters hasn't he seen the angels hasn't he witnessed them he still chooses to disobey so knowledge doesn't help haven't you seen the blank faces 
so many times when you tell somebody only they nod their heads yes yes i know i know i know this about islam i know this verse of the quran but in practice they are just zero following the temptations the whims and desires so he is the most dangerous friend shaitan is the most dangerous friend recognize this deception my dear sisters please recognize the deception of the shaitan allah says in verse number 120 shaitan makes them false promises and creates in them false desires but the satan's promises are nothing but deception and my dear sisters it all begins from the eat party itself filled with haram riba auzu billah as if to say planning of disobedience so may allah save us and may allah protect us and there's another kind of ghafla my dear sisters another type of attack of the shaitan that is ghafla which is again you know destroyer of the pure heart that ghafla what is ghafla my dear sisters do you know what is ghafla heedlessness carelessness care a hang type of attitude it's not sinning you don't sin not involved directly into sin but all i care about all the person cares about is appearances and superficial things and looks you know all about fashion all about material things not bothered about what's the state of the heart it's like a killer of the heart this ghafla not not actively involving into any sin but it's in a state of you know not not really recognizing the presence of allah not understanding just lost into nothing concrete you know fashion the looks the material things these are the things that matter you know what so and so is wearing what so and so is you know having in the house what furniture like extremely occupied with all the material things and the material desires that is also a type of ghafla so may allah save us and may allah protect it and you know my dear sisters how the attitude is it's okay i know la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah so yeah i'm negligent now it's okay at the time of death yeah i'll read shahada and I, everything will be fine is that so are you so confident only those who live their lives with la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah will be able to die with la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah otherwise the shahada will not be possible on the tip of the tongue and we have seen so many people struggling to utter the words of shahada at the time of death do you know that my dear sisters and one of the incidents is that one of the sheikhas was narrating and i narrate to you the same she says when one this when when one this uh, when this uh, muslima when there was one sister a muslima who had reached of age maybe 65 years and above and she was on her deathbed almost like you know dying and she kept pleading to her people make me recite the shahada she kept asking her people but you know in the indo pak areas in our asian countries especially it's a it's a wrong conception it's a misconception that you know making the people recite the shahada at the time of death is an indication that they are dying you know making the patient realize that you're almost going to die whereas it's not so nauzubillah so it is said that seven of her siblings came and saw her and she kept requesting them to make her recite the shahada because she couldn't recite but none of them did that because they wanted to give her hopes of life because it is as if you know only when you're dying you recite allahu akbar such misconceptions they did not make her recite the shahada and she died a death without declaring the oneness of allah subhanallah and there are numerous stories which show us and which tell us that this is something which is so everyday happening that people 
are not very easily able to say the shahada at the time when they die. Why? Because they have not lived the shahada in their lives. So the heart opens up and throws whatever is inside when you die. Ultimately, on the time, at the time of death, on the day of your death and my death, it will be clear and evident whether we have lived the life of Shahada and Allah will make it happen to them who live Shahada in their lives. They will be able to utter the words of Shahada and the destinations after that will be so easy for them. And one more point, my dear sisters, anybody you go to who is sick, not even on the verge of death, it's always nice to make them recite the Shahada because what better gift do you want to be gifted then your loved one dying with shahada. Subhanallah. May Allah give us all a, a beautiful ending where we, where we can recite the shahada in the best possible terms. And more than that, we can live the shahada in our lives. We can live day in and day out. We can live la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, where Allah is our supreme center where Allah is always the foremost in our lives, where we love Allah the most, where we fear Allah the most, where he is our priority for everything. And then comes everything and everyone else in our lives. That should be the life of the believer, my dear sisters. So that is what the shaitan does. Coming back to this verse number 119 and 120, where Allah, where shaitan is promising these three grave promises he's doing. Wala udilannahum, I will deviate them. Wala, wala umanni yannahum, I will give them false hopes and desires. Wala amurannahum, and I will command them, I will give them the amr, I will command them to do that wrong. Allahu Akbar. And then Allah says, whoever forsakes Allah, takes shaitan for a friend, has of a surety suffered a loss that is so clear, that is so manifest. And it is one of the greatest loss that the person has suffered. And then another verse in chapter 7, verse number 17 in Surah Araf also Allah speaks about the shaitan's plan. And that, that, is, that is the verse where Allah says, he's going to attack you from in front of you, from behind you, from your sides. He is going to attack you from all the sides. So imagine, can you imagine sisters, if we are in, on, the, on a battlefield and if we know shaitan is going to attack from all the sides, how equipped we are going to be? Are we going to leave the atkar? Because we know that the morning and the evening atkar are going to keep us protected and sheltered. Even if the shaitan comes, even if the evil eye comes, whatever comes. But because we have the sealing and the protection of remembrance of Allah, we have the fortress of a believer. We are protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our salah through remembrance of Allah, through our adhkar. Here is the beautiful solution Allah has given us. So we do we go into a battlefield without the equipments? We don't do that. We are so careful. So we ask Allah that we, that he keeps us steadfast with our adhkar, with our salah, with our dua, and with constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then for that, what we need to do is step number three. Point number three, we need to have a vivid game plan. We need to have a solid concrete plan, action plan. Now, how do we have a solid action plan? Many times we do make plans, but then we don't live up to it and then we forget it. Many times this happens, right? And it's human to err. We make mistakes. It's okay. But we can have some more practical steps, my dear sisters, so that our plan after Ramadan is more solid and more concrete so that we don't slip as much. Like, for example, now what would be, see, like, if you're, if you're traveling somewhere, my dear sisters, and if you're traveling without, you know, a proper Google map or you're traveling and just you find yourself at a corner where it's raining, it's dark, and it's windy, and you don't find the way. So 
that's a very scary state of mind, right? Instead, if you have the proper Google map, you know your destination well, if you know where you want to arrive, that's a very confident state of mind, right? So what's a vivid game plan? It's like, for example, after Ramadan, I want to complete my, my entire translation cover to cover of the glorious Quran in a period of two months or one month or whatever you decide. This becomes a solid step, right? So how am I going to achieve that plan? I keep my musalla near, I, uh, I keep my mushaf near my musalla. And once I finish my fajr salah, what am I going to do? I'm going to immediately open the mushaf. Now, when I open the mushaf, automatically I feel like reading. It's at the same spot where I pray, I keep my mushaf also over there. And I keep my dua book over there. I keep my adkar book over there. So immediately, as soon as, as I finish my salah, I have around 10 minutes, 12 minutes or 15 minutes in which I'm going to do my adkar. It's an investment for the, full, for the full day, my dear sister, until the asar. We pray asar and do our evening adkar. So 10 minutes of investment. Imagine how much Allah is going to protect us throughout the day. How many shaitanic temptations we are going to be able to overcome and shun the shaitan, little steps can help us. So what is the solid plan? I will open my mushaf after Fajr Salah or after Zohar or whenever. On the spot, I'm going to keep my mushaf and I'm going to open it. That will inshallah help me to start reciting my Quran and do my atkar. Or for example, another solid uh, point in the plan will be at, at, at 10 p.m. in the night, I'm going to switch off my phone or lights off at 10 p.m. after Isha. Whatever, this is just an example. You can do it according to what you feel. Or another example could be, I'm going to put on my walking shoes immediately after I finish my Asar Salah at this time so that it becomes a routine that I go for a 40 minutes walk every day. And I'm not going to carry my phone. I'm just going to be, you know, getting in touch with nature, contemplating while I walk. Or alternatively, I'm going to carry my earplugs and my phone. And I'm going to hear a very inspirational talk that will keep my iman high while I'm walking. So that's how you put, in, you put it on paper. You put it in writing so that immediately you can start implementing. Or another point could be immediately after Salah, Fajr Salah, I will go to my purse. I'm going to keep my purse handy or I'm going to go and reach out to my cupboard, to my purse to give sadaka. Whether it, and I put it in the sadaka box or the sadaka pouch. Whether it is one sadaka, one dollar, one ringgit, five, ten, whatever you can. Or different time, different, different amounts you can put. But that will be my routine. Or you set an alarm. That every day after I finish my Fajr Salah, this will be the alarm, the reminder for me for Sadaka. So this is a concrete plan, concrete step, my dear sisters. <clears throat> now, another way. In this vivid game plan, how to plan, there's another way how we can, how we can, uh, you know, maximize Baraka. How we can maximize and grab the baraka uh, even in the month of Shawwal and after that also. How we are going to, uh, you know, make our best as far as uh, grabbing is going to concern. How we are going to grab the baraka. Okay. Now, just for example, see, for example, we do our wudu. Okay. Niya is very important, my dear sisters. The key factor is intentions, our niya. Now, for example, we. Uh, for uh, any time during the day, or maybe at the time of Doha Salah. Fajr Salah is over, we did our Adkar, we did our Quran, morning recitation, fine. Now, after some time, we just went to the washroom. So after every washroom, it's always nice to be in a state of wudu. That's another point we can add, that after this Ramadan left, I'm always going to be in a state of wudu until the next until the next Ramadan. 
I'm going to always maintain the state of my voodoo. That can be a concrete point, okay? Because we know the advantages of being in a state of voodoo. We are we are in a we are in a very good state of mind in the shelter of Allah. Inshallah, Inshallah. You know, when the shaitan tempts us, immediately we can say "Auzu billah" and he can run away from us. So yeah. So I was giving you the example of 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 wudu. Now we come out of the washroom. We do our wudu. We come out of the washroom and we intend praying two units, two rakat salah. Now, which salah you want to pray? You can you can have multiple intentions. What intention first is? You can get the rewards of three different salah. How? You're praying doha. Okay. So you you have the intention of doha salah. Then you have the intentions of salatul, uh, the salah, the salah of wudu. Okay, that after wudu with Bilal radiallahu taala used to pray. You remember the 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 salah which Hazrat Bilal radiallahu taala used to pray, and that is why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam heard his footsteps ahead of him in Jannah, and he asked Bilal, "What is the act that makes you walk in Jannah?" I can hear your footsteps in Jannah, and Hazrat Bilal radiallahu taala an says, "Subhanallah, there is nothing that I can think of, O Prophet of Allah, except that I perform tahatul wudu. That I always, whenever I do the wudu, I perform I perform two rakat salah, especially for wudu. So, my dear sisters, why lose the opportunity of that? Only intentions, just a thought, and you are rewarded." Subhan Allah. So grab the rahma of Allah. So what do we do? We do three intentions, multiple intentions. First is what the salah that Bilal radiallahu taala an prayed all the time. That is of wudu. Second salah is what that of duha. And the third, you can add one more of istikhara if you want to ask, seek Allah's guidance for something. So you can add one more niya of istikhara. Not just praying two units. But you have done multiple intentions, and inshallah, Allah will Allah will guide you for for the istikhara. Allah will accept your doha. Doha salah is the you know sadaka for joints for each part of the body. Subhan Allah, Subhan Rabbi Al Allah. So many benefits Allah gives us. The only thing is we need to be alert, my dear sisters. And imagine if we explain all these to our children. They will jump out of joy and they'll say, "Mummy, I did two units, but I'm going to be rewarded for six units, inshallah. I'm going to be rewarded multiple rewards by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Isn't it true, my dear sisters? Yes. Now that's that's the example of two rakat uh, salam. Now same thing. Example. We'll come to fasting later. That we, then we are going to do the fasting point with multiple niya. We can do that. Another example. supposing you're cooking but when you're starting to cook there are so many beautiful intentions you can make allah may there be baraka in the thing that i'm cooking allah may this may this food that my children my family my parents my my neighbors whoever eats the food may be a source of baraka for them allah open the doors of risk for them allah allah may this food that i'm cooking may it rejuvenate my iman and whoever eats from here may it rejuvenate the iman of the person who is eating allah may the may this food nourish the bodies strengthen our bodies to stand up before you to bow down before you in sujood allah help us by eating this food we can be better up to you we can be better servants to you isn't it my dear sisters we can have so many beautiful intentions now for example you are tired you don't feel like cooking but yet you know it is my family i have to cook for them sometimes you have so many things at hand but you pray to allah allah see allah talk to allah allah see allah i am tired allah but yet i am doing it because i have to do it allah please reward me for this allah allah please you have to give me multiple rewards for this allah because i'm struggling with pain in my knees i'm struggling with pain in my back still i'm doing it allah because i know it is sadaka from me allah accept it as a huge mountain of sadaka from me 
you think Allah will not reward you, my dear sisters? Allah, give me energy because I'm doing this. Help me to do better tomorrow. Imagine all our niyyah. Allah will accept the duas, my dear sisters. The only thing is we need to be connected to Allah. The more strongly we are connected to Allah, Allah runs to us if we walk to him. You see the immense energy that you will get in spite of the weaknesses, in spite of the sick body, there will be flow of baraka. There will be immense strength that comes from la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. All power belongs to Allah and Allah will give us from that. Imagine, imagine if Allah is pleased with us, what is this work? And what is this day and this night? If he is pleased with us, he will grant us from his treasures, inshallah. The only thing is we need to have that intentions clear. We need to ask Allah. For haven't you seen, my dear sisters, just see the example of two different people eating food. Okay? Two people are eating food. One person is taking every morsel full of sugar, thanking Allah, being so grateful to Allah, every bite that the person takes, chews properly, is thankful to Allah. Thank you for the halal food, oh my Lord. There are so many who do not get to eat. You gave me a plate full of food today to eat. I'm so grateful to you, oh my Lord. You know, sisters, and the other person is eating without gratefulness, cribbing, not happy, thinking that I could have got better or absolutely not grateful to Allah for watching a movie or doing something, some negative thoughts and feelings inside and, and just consuming the food as it is. Is it not different? The one person, the person number one, she's grabbing all the rahma, all the mercy, all the blessings of Allah are flowing along with the food there is iman that is growing along with the food as compared to the other person. Two people eating same food, same amount of quantity, but one has a different intention and the other has a different intention, negative and positive. So we have to teach this to ourselves. We have to, we have to ask this for ourselves, my dear sisters. Every time when I'm eating, am I thanking Allah enough? And imagine... The dua after eating, Alhamdulillah, this dua, if we recite, all our sins are going to be forgiven. If genuinely we understand the dua and we recite the dua, and we are not just mere recitation, we are thankful to Allah from the bottom of our heart. Inshallah, my dear sisters, so good. We eat for our own pleasures, we satisfy our own hunger. We quench our own thirst and Allah forgives our sin. What a merciful Lord Allah is. We love you, Allah. We love you so much, Allah, for all that you have given us. Subhanallah. Similarly, you know, when a mother is feeding the baby, if she's feeding with the zikr, with the shukar, with, with, you know, emotions of being close to Allah, Imagine how that baby is going to be because the baby is being fed along with the milk. Iman is running into the bloodstream of that baby because that baby has got a thankful mom. A, ma a mother who is so thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who's not always cribbing to the husband, trying to pull out the maximum, you know, funds and finances from the husband and always cribbing, you don't do this for me, you don't buy this for me. Allahu Akbar. Most of the families, they're broken families. And most of the families, it's, it's like a burning house, you know, because of the problem of finances. If only that could be channelized to asking Allah silently in the middle of the night, praying to Allah in tahajjud and being grateful to each other, the spouses, if that they can practice, if they can practice a little more rahma, a little more love, a little more thankfulness to Allah. Allah will erase all the problems and Allah's, Allah's rahmah will flow into the family, my dear sisters. So 
you know in fact the formula for increase in risk do you know what is the formula for increase in risk can you tell me sisters what is the one formula for getting more for increasing your blessings yes my dear sisters i am waiting for your answers excellent very good very good nahid very good naufia humaira mashallah gratitude shukar exactly la in shakar tum la azidan nakum allah clearly mentions in the quran if you want more you got to be thankful allah says if you are grateful i will give you more so the formula for getting more the formula for getting more of this dunya as well as anything the formula for getting more is shukar if you are thankful allah will give us more if we are grateful allah will give us more and we are coming to that point inshallah so that's about the vivid game plan a vivid structure so solid planning my dear sisters we sit down tonight and we plan what do we want in the next two months after ramadan next six months what we want and the full year until until the next ramadan what is my plan i want to do the entire bukhari the summarized version i want to do i want to read the translation of the quran i want to uh, enroll myself into the language i want to i want to do mathematics a a levels i want to score better whatever i'm going to teach maths to my neighbor inshallah whatever we want to do we got to write that specific and clear goals now this brings us to point number 4 and that is figure out your strengths what are my strengths and my dear sisters before figuring out what are my strengths i also need to figure out what are my weaknesses because through weaknesses we know our strengths even more so usually how our attitude is no i i am very lazy or i usually procrastinate i tend to be late to all the programs i am a late latif you know or i am i am i am i'm not good for anything this is how we have in our mind sometimes you know so this needs to be changed completely or you may call it an identity shift how do you do an identity shift calling instead of calling one self like i am lazy i procrastinate i am always late you know i am a good for nothing instead of that this is also or uh, uh, an equipment used by the shaitan procrastination also is an equipment used by the shaitan so what do we do what do we do we instead we shift our identities how do we look at ourselves i am a strong muslima i am an effective muslima i am an empowered muslim i am a hafiza in the making you know those who are in the process of learning of doing hifz of the quran even if they are just doing the last juz or if they are doing maybe 14 juz 15 juz they are starting i am a hafiza in the training i am becoming a hafiza inshallah or i am a strong muslim this is something which you recognize yourself by instead of constantly putting negative thoughts inside i am a strong believer i have a lot of hope in allah these are the kind of statements we need to make inshallah yeah so how do we figure out our strengths now another way to figure out our strengths is see sisters each one of us is different and we are all we all uh you know are different in different ways in the sense that some of us like uh you know reading the quran and contemplating more like contemplation more reflection more some of us some of us just love the the just love the uh recitation more and some of us you know like to stand up late in the night for salah some of us are very very keen have a special inkling for fasting more some of us are easy with charity is concerned for some 
the nafil salah is easier so what comes very naturally to you find out that what comes see the fard of course all of us have to do we have to stand up we have to do all the faraids but this i'm talking about nawafil the extra things what we are doing to come close to allah so what is it that you want to do some of us find it very easy to practice extra recitation of the quran some of us are better we feel more inclined to allah we come closer to allah when we read the tafsir you know some of us through zikr yes correct by zikr allah some of us can come closer by nafil salah some of us by nafil fasting you know you feel very close to allah when you're fasting when the hunger pangs come or when you feel thirsty you tell you talk to allah and you say allah this thirst i'm only bearing for you so i want a good return allah i know that you are the best who returns and who rewards but allah in in this dunya also give me a lot of qua give me a lot of strength allah give me make my iman strong allah make my tawakkul strong allah make me a good example of the believers allah so whatever dua you want you can make while you are feeling thirsty while you are feeling hungry in the fast in the midst of the fast some of us give charity allah you know it's difficult for me to give but remove the the love of uhibbu dunya from my heart remove the love of money from my heart help me to be charitable so accordingly you make duas and you do that so what is it that you specialize in right there's something some ibada you can relate to it directly and you can connect to allah better through it recognize what that is yes it could be respecting parents i am not so happy with my parents but yet oh allah i respect them because you know you you have told me to do that it's difficult dealing with parents with some of the parents but yet oh allah i do it because because you have commanded me to do it and through that inshallah i'll gain my janna so it could be anything my dear sisters but what do we do how do we how do we uh, you know find out what you're good at which ibada you're good at how do you connect to allah the best because that will be your source of strengthening your iman and making you strong and getting the qua right so now what you do is that is what will also decide which door of janna you want to enter from right if you are good at fasting more inshallah allah will help you to enter from the gate of ar rayyan do you know sisters how many gates of janna exactly fahim nasreen very good mashallah nasreen reshma parveen khadija fatima nahid excellent saida Shazia, Sahib, uh, Sahiba Begum, Masha Allah, Roma, good, good. Saida, Saida Udin, Farzana, Masha Allah, Masha Allah. So eight, Sumaya, yes, excellent sisters. Eight gates of Jannah. Now, what, what, why Allah has made all these eight gates of Jannah? The one who is doing that will be allowed to enter from that respective gate. So what are the gates of Jannah? The gate of Salah. the gate of jihad those who are particular about salah will be asked come on so and so enter from the gate of our salah enter from the gate of jihad the one who's struggling and striving you know and the gate of sadaqa third gate fourth is the gate of rayyan fifth is the gate of hajj to go for the pilgrimage sixth is the gate of al qazimin al ghais wal afina an nas those who pardon people and those who you know those who just drink drown their anger those who forgive people yes wal qazimin al ghais wal afina an nas subhanallah those who can control their egos in spite of the fact that they are angry but they remember that yes i have to control my anger and allah i'm doing it only for you ask allah at that very point of anger tell allah I'm in your hearts of hearts make dua allah i am only drinking this anger i am only swallowing this anger and forgiving the person because i want a reward from you allah and i know your reward is great and show me these rewards in dunya and akhirah allah and you will see the fruits of that my dear sisters so sixth is wal qazimin al ghais wal afina an nas and seventh is 
aiman that is those who are saved from reckoning with aman they are going to be entering with aman with peace those who have no reckoning because they are such good deeds subhanallah the sixth is those who forgive people those who pardon people and those who forgive them the seventh is those who are saved from reckoning and the eighth is zikr zikr the door of zikr those who constantly they are their tongues are moist with the zikr of allah constant remembrance of allah in whatever state they are in so choose your door my dear sisters think of the choice right now that inshallah for me my door is charity for me my door is arrayan inshallah if you have that hopes with allah on the day of judgment when we are closer to jannah allah will call out our names imagine that the day when allah will call out our names and tell us you can enter and imagine the 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 happiness of a person the contentment of a person my dear sister imagine if you are called out from two different doors allahu akbar if you are called out from the door of charity as well as the door of rayyan subhana rabbi al ala our lord is so merciful our lord is so merciful our lord is so loving and he loves us he will never ever leave any stone unturned if we have done little allah gives us so much subhanallah now now that brings us to the next point of consistency is the key istikama all this we have to do not just for few days or a week or two weeks no what we have picked up the gold in ramadan we have to treasure that gold that is something we need to treasure we need to keep it safe we need to nurture it nourish it we have to grow in our contentment we have to grow in our shukar we have to grow in our sabar we have to be steadfast now what is istikama my dear sisters istikama means being vigilant standing up upright in the right direction no deviation not going here and there yeah the same root as mustaqim qama okay steadfastness establishment the same root is the same the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala they whenever they learned something new they would put it into practice and they would spread it it's not possible that they knew something new something new and they would not practice it so this is istikama right and as allah mentions in chapter 47 verse number 33 ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attiullaha wa attiur rasul wala tubtilu a'malakum that is oh you believe oh you who who have believed obey allah and obey the messenger and do not invalidate your deeds now what is this invalidation of deeds my dear sisters it is like like quran gives the example and we go on to the next verse my dear sisters which is given in chapter 16 verse number 92 where allah subhanahu wa taala gives the example yeah of the of this lady who you know do not be like the woman who foolishly unravels her yarn after it is firmly spun by taking your oaths as a means of deceiving one another in favor of a stronger group surely allah tests you through this and on the day of judgment he will certainly make your difference clear to you so it's like what my dear sisters this is like a lady who you know supposing there's a lady who's who's making a beautifully spun if she's doing uh, you know if she's knitting knitting of wool she's knitting from wool she's knitting a whole big sweater okay for herself now after doing the whole big sweater what does she do she does a foolish foolish act of unraveling and opening the entire thing or cuts it into pieces all the over she just cuts it off who will do that only a madman only an insane person would do that right allah is giving the example here of the same person who does that in ramadan you do all that acts and you've already dug the gold mine and you cherish you already got the gold but when you come out of ramadan you're careless you just leave the gold here and there 
or rather throw it away anywhere not not even you know caring about it auzu billah we don't want that right so what is istikama istikama according to abu bakr siddiq he said it means to be firm in belief of god and uncompromising monotheism umar bin khattab radhiyallahu ta'ala an said to be consistent and consistent and firm in in obeying the commands of allah uthman bin affan said when he when he was asked what is istikama he said it is ikhlas secret behind uh, istikama is to have a sound heart that is a qalbun salim the secret behind it istikama is to have a sound heart that loves allah to follow the deen and try to be the best pleasing to the one whom you love that is allah subhanahu wa taala Okay, let me ask you one question, my dear sisters. Do you ask for istikama every day? Do you pray for istikama? Don't you think it's important to pray for istikama, my dear sisters, when it is so important? How many of you say no? We don't ask for istikama every day. Okay, those who are saying Maryam and Noor, Zarina, and all the others, Nimra, it is important to ask. Yes. Do we ask for it every day? Yes or no? Yes, excellent. Jahan, excellent words. Jahan has said. Yes, Nasreen has said. When do we do that? Rukia, correct. We do it when we recite Surah Fatiha every Salah, every Raka. Eh din as Sirat al Mustaqim, isn't it? That's why I said istikama comes from where. From Kama ya Kumu is Mustakim. Yes, exactly. So now what we do when we stand and we pray? Eh, din as Sirat al Mustakim. But there's nothing in the mind when we are reading that Eh, din as Sirat al Mustakim. But now, after today, you know that I am asking Allah for for Hidayah. I am asking for steadfastness. So what do we do when we are asking? Every time, eh dina sirat, eh dina, eh dina is what? Oh Allah, guide me to the straight path, sirat al mustaqim. That means every time, Allah, I don't know whether I whether I should take this path or that path. Allah, when my child is asking me for something, I don't know whether to say yes or to say no for the gray area. So many confusions, right? Parenting is so difficult task today. It's so challenging. Allah, guide my heart. When we are reciting Surah Fatiha, we should have all this in my mind. Allah, I'm asking you guidance every time. I beg you for guidance, Allah. I'm asking you every time. Show me, uh, uh, give me steadfastness. Struggling for steadfastness. Steadfastness, my dear sisters, is commitment. It's constancy. It's dedication. It's being devoted, faithful to Allah, unwavering faith. being staunch and steady it's continuous it's consistent being persistent it's fortitude it's a noble quality being resolute that is istikama that is steadfastness so my dear sisters we ask allah five times a day and every time we pray surah fatiha this should come to our mind allah you have to guide me allah please i beg you allah show me the right path right and subhanallah we see the fruits of istikama what are the beautiful fruits of istikama that i recited in the beginning of my uh, of my presentation today the surahs the, the beautiful verses of the glorious quran which say inna allazina qalu rabbuna allah summa istaqamu fala khawfun alaihim wala hum yahzanun verily those who say our lord is allah and remain firm on the path on them shall be no fear nor shall they grieve imagine sisters a state of no fear and no grief and we find so many people undergoing depression today yes this is chapter 46 verse number 13 and i'm coming to that one i'm coming to the other beautiful verse again which is uh, which is from surah fusilat that is Chapter forty-one, verse number thirty to thirty-two. I'm coming to that later. But before that, what is the reward of istikama? 
lovely reward, my dear sisters. Allah is saying the reward will be, if you're steadfast, the reward will be no fear nor grief. So many people suffer from fear, from depression, from anger, from hatred. And here Allah is giving us freedom. Allah is making us free. Allah is promising this to the believers. If we are steadfast, there will be no fear nor shall they grieve. That is the fruit of istikama. Now similar to this is a beautiful verse of chapter number 41. Surah Fusilat verses 30 to 32. Allah says, rahim <laughs> Subhan Allah, such beautiful verses, my dear sisters. Allah says, those who say our Lord is Allah and further stand straight and steadfast, what happens to them? The angels descend upon them from time to time. You see baraka flowing? Angels descend upon them from time to time. This is the first blessing. What is the second blessing? Fear you not, they suggest. And what are the angels doing? Angels are protecting, they are guarding, my dear sisters. Fear you not, they suggest, nor grieve, but receive the glad tidings of the gardens of bliss that you have been promised. They are saying that you are going to receive the blessings of Allah. Subhana Rabbi Allah, wab shiru bil jannah. That you were promised that there was a vada that you were promised from Allah. And then Allah says, Allah is saying, and the angels are saying, We are your protectors. Angels are saying, We are your protectors in this life and in the year after. Therein shall you have all that your souls shall desire. Therein shall you have all that you asked for. Subhanallah. What more, my dear sisters? And the verse number 32, Allah says, a hospitable gift from the one of forgiving most merciful. Imagine, my dear sisters, these are the fruits of istikama. So in short, the five fruits, what are the five fruits? What are the five, five fruits, sisters? One, is the angels will descend upon them and give glad tidings not to be grieved. That is even at the time of death, at the time of questioning of the grave, all that. The second is what? You have been giving glad tidings of Jannah. The third is no fear. The fourth is you will have the companions of Jannah. The five is you will stay in Jannah for eternity. Subhanallah. My dear sisters, these are the fruits. These are the rewards of istikama. May Allah keep us all steadfast. And may Allah keep us straight upon his path, inshallah. Inshallah. Amen, Ya Rab. Then we move on to the sixth one. The sixth point is the beginning of istikama is from our salah. How is my salah? What is the quality of my salah is important, sisters. Each time I pray, is it better? Is it improving my salah or not? When we are speaking of istikama and salah, we say the first thing is karma for salah, to stand up for salah. Establish salah, waqimat is salah, right? Solidify salah. The ability to stand firm, to be consistent. Not just being able to stand in salah, my dear sisters. Not mere actions. Not just a cardiovascular activity the salah has to be. In fact, our inner being also has to be, has to have istikama. Our inner being, the internal, the state of the heart, the state of the qalb. So if in salah, the state of the qalb is good, and even the 
external, that is the actions of the body, the limbs, the outer body has to also humble itself, right? The inner is the kalp, that is the iman, the yakin, whether you have shak or doubt or, or you have yakin, that is the inner side. And the outer is the salah, the Quran, the recitation is the outer part, the, the recitation of the Quran and the humbling, right? That is Iman, that is inner sight, and Amilus Saleha, that is, that is manifestation in the form of Salah that is coming out. So Iman and good, and good deeds. And how uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna fil, fil jasadi mudga, iza salahat, salahat jasadu kullu. Iza fasadat, fasadat jasadu kullu. Allah wahi al -hal. There is that there is a piece of flesh, a piece of yes, in the in, in your body, and that is the heart. If the heart is sound, the entire body is sound. But if the heart is corrupt, the entire body is corrupt. Right? So that 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 piece of flesh which is inside the heart is the king, my dear sisters. If the king is sound, the entire body is sound. So that is what is very, very important. Sometimes we give so much importance to the outer, the external ibadah, but unfortunately, inside it's all shallow. There's nothing inside. So we miss the point, my dear sisters. The same thing happens even with hivs. You have people doing excellent hivs of the Quran, very beautiful tajweed, beautiful recitation. But when an earthquake comes, when an earthquake hits, when a calamity comes, when the testing time comes, they fall apart. Why? Because inside it was all shallow. Just one calamity comes and they break down. Because the root inside is not strong. So we don't want that for us. We want the roots to solidify from inside. Why? Because it was only the structure, only the outer part. The foundation was not strong. So Quran only on the tongue. If it's not internalized, it is something which we need to work on. Similarly, Islam is not only in the dress, not only in the halal and haram, the eating. While we take a lot of care what we eat, you know, we take a lot of care that we eat halal. Similarly, we should take a lot of care that we also do not gaze at haram things. Our gaze also has to take care of halal and haram. Our relationships, we have to be careful of halal and haram. Not just halal food and consumption. So what we consume is with our eyes, with our ears, with our mouth, everything is consumption. To focus on all halal. Yes. So the focus has to be not only on the outer, but even the inside has to be very, very solid. The heart has to be solid. It has to be pure. A kalbun salim. We strive towards. Yes. Even the slightest wind, you know, leave alone the storm. Even when a slight wind comes, it knocks down the person if there is nothing inside. So, therefore, thus both the internal as well as external, both are important. One has to take care of that. That has to be proper. So, when it comes to Salah, my dear sisters, we have to strive to take it to another level. Now, what will be in our agenda, in our plan? Our plan, we can add Salah. For, for Salah, we can add that, inshallah, I want to take it to the next level. And how do we take it to the next level? For example, now you're already praying your Sunnatul Mawqidah. You're already doing your Sunnah. So you can add two more units of Nafil Salah to your daily routine. You can add Doha. You can add Tahajjud. Yes. And if you're already doing Tahajjud, Doha, then you can add Khushu. That I, you know, I understand the meaning of every Surah that I'm reciting. So that the level of khushu increases. And let me tell you one thing about khushu, my dear sisters. Khushu is only granted to, to the one who asks for khushu. So are you asking for khushu? Rabbi, a'inni, ala zikrika, shukrika, husni, ibadati. Constantly ask Allah in sujood. Allah grant me humility, grant me khushu. You know, the khashya of Allah is given to only if we ask. So we have to ask for that. Constantly we have to ask. Yes, inshallah. So 
So the next level could also be improvement in Kushu. Then uh, also it could be, you know, plan for better Salah. How do you plan for better Salah? Before Salah, go to the verses in the Quran, just a five minute reference. What is the translation? Because we don't understand the language. Most of us don't. So you go to the translation, refer to that. And then you immediately, when you recite, you'll feel the khushu in the heart, inshallah. Yes, you'll feel the khushu in the heart. If you, if you refer to the surah, it's translation, it's tafsir. In short, you know the meaning. So that much you'll be able to concentrate better. Like see my dear sisters, like, you know, for example, if you finish the, if, if you finish the Zohar Salah one day, and you feel very, you feel discontent in the heart. And you feel that I didn't do my salah properly. Somehow there's the sweetness of Iman I didn't feel in the salah. So what do you do, my dear sisters? Any way that you can work out, what is it that you do? You think about it and you leave it like that? Is it that we do? No. For example, okay, astaghfar. Okay, yeah. For example, if your child does not perform well in mathematics, do you just feel bad and sad and you leave it? No. What do we do then? We hire a maths teacher. We make efforts. We plan for better mathematics for our child. We love our child and it's good and we must do that. Similarly, when I don't do well in my salah, I have a strategic plan. I make efforts. Why did this happen to me? Why did I forget in my salah? Why couldn't I pay attention? So I write strategic planning. I write down. I write down the points tomorrow. Now for the next salah, what I'll do is I will see. I will recite these three, these two surahs after Surah Fatiha. And those two surahs, I'll reflect upon the meaning. When I say Subhan Rabbi Al Allah, and I, when I bow down to Allah, I will really feel how immense Allah Ta'ala is. Then I write down the two duas which I'll make in sujood. I'll ask for my children. I'll ask for my spouse. I'll pray for my akhirah. I'll ask Allah in sujood to give me that sweetness of iman. So what I'm doing for the next salah, I'm planning. For example, if you don't cook one dish properly at home, do you just leave it like that? Don't you go on YouTube and search a better recipe? Don't you ask feedback from your family? How did this dish turn out? Tomorrow I'll try to make it better. Because I want to feed my children the best, right? We do that. So much we do for our, for our worldly things. Then why not for Salah, my dear sister? Imagine we must do that for our Salah. <clears throat> and similarly, like, you know, if I know 20 surahs that I have memorized fully, now I will do 21 surahs. Up to next Ramzan, I'll at least memorize 10 more surahs from the from the last juice or those who know the entire last juice they can go higher you know i'm going to recite every week i'm going to add a new surah to my salah or i'm going to add every new 10 verses to my salah every week whatever we can so taking the salah to the next level inshallah also you are doing tahajjud you were doing Qiyam in, in Ramadan. We can continue that Tahajjud. We can still carry the Mus'haf in our hands and pray the Tahajjud. We can do uh, uh, the Salah of the Mukantirin. You know, the Salah that, that, that has 1,000 verses, that has 100 verses, or at least 100 verses, if not 1,000 verses. But whatever best we can. And making Salah not just a cardiovascular activity, rather a very, very smart activity, inshallah. Right, sisters? So that's what we can do as far as Salah is concerned. And then we move on to the next point, that is fasting. Now, for example, for fasting, we have such great opportunities as far as fasting is concerned. First of all, we have to miss, we, uh, you know, accomplish the goal of the missed fast. That is separate, seven, eight, nine, whatever you have missed, you're going to do that. The best time is to do it immediately after Ramadan is over. You can do it uh, immediately in the first week of Shawwal. If that is not possible, there are various differences of opinions. There are different opinions of scholars where the scholars have said, because you want to do the six 
voluntary fast of shawal you can even do the missed fast after shawal inshallah you can do that but those who feel that first i want to do my missed fast then they can do their missed fast allah will reward them for the shawal fast even if they intend after outside of shawal if they do it with the intention of getting the reward for shawal they will get that also inshallah that's one of the opinions which is a proof we know that uh, hazrat aisha siddiqa radhiyallahu ta'ala an she had not accomplished her miss mid her missed fast until the next ramadan you know and that hadith is there so that shows that you know she did it later on so it can also the missed fast can also be done later on but we are not sure of life we don't know so we do not want to leave anything that is fard because we want we must and we should accomplish that so that is as, as far as the fast fard missed fast now coming to which the voluntary fast of shawal if we fast these fallen voluntary six fast it is as though we have fasted the whole year subhanallah right we know the beautiful hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is as if we have fasted 365 days yes subhanallah and besides that we can keep up the spirit of fasting by fasting mondays thursdays now here again we grab the baraka of niya we do three in one how we do three in one all the last three voluntary volunt voluntary fast see if the voluntary fast is falling on the three white days that is the 13th 14th and 15th of every month if it is uh, uh, on the white days ayamul bid so if it is in the month of shawal and if it is falling like these days today is the is 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 again the ayamul bid and we are fasting so saturday sunday and monday these were for some of the countries for some of the countries it is sunday monday and tuesday so when we are we are fasting here so it's of shawal it is a yamul bid and because tomorrow is monday so we'll also have the niya of fasting on monday thursdays the prophet used to do that so we are getting we are killing three birds with one stone subhanallah we are going to get three three rewards subhanallah it's such a blessing from allah subhanahu wa taala right and as far as fasting is concerned my dear sister grab the opportunities train the young ones in the family plan in advance like a small mini ramadan a six fast of shawal and three fast of ayamul bid in shawal so you have nine fast like a small mini ramadan you encourage everyone in the family try to get up for suhoor together almost like a ramadan feeling then inshallah inshallah so that's how and not just in shawal but afterwards also we carry on with the three ayamul bid and also monday thursdays so that keeps the abatin uh, going yes that that keeps us uh, alert and connected to allah because what better ibada to get connected to allah than fasting allah subhanahu wa taala said in the hadith e qudsi the reward for a fasting person is with me and i will reward how much ever i want imagine allah is saying immeasurable reward uncountable blessings inshallah then we move on to point number 8 <clears throat> that is being connected to the quran how can we not be correct connected to the quran my dear sisters it is al hidaya how can one think of successful life without connecting to the quran there's no success without the quran you know <clears throat> if if we don't live live our lives as per the quran it's it, it's it's a it's a useless life subhanallah you know if i was to ask you a question my dear sisters what is niyama what is niyama will you agree with me that wealth fame name offspring power home villa health all these are niyama yes they are the blessings of allah right and we 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 usually say you know we comment on people and we say wow mashallah they are so blessed with niyama what is the thing that comes to our mind when we think of niyama all these things come to our mind right 
all this is niyama alhamdulillah all this is niyama but the greatest of niyama is the niyama is a treasure of hidaya exactly reshma you've hit the nail on the head yes zahida yes fahim yes maryam yes nasreen exactly the greatest of niyama is hidaya for all this that i mentioned earlier this all is not a niyama without hidaya it's only a test it can be a zahma it can be a test you know child or our children become niyama only if there is hidaya wealth becomes a trial otherwise the wealth becomes a niyama only if it is spent in the right way our houses our cars our villa are all of this is a trial my dear sister without hidaya if there is no hidaya it is all going to be a trial for us just change the little angle of thinking and see the difference between firon and suleiman alai salam one has hidaya the other does not have hidaya both have wealth firon had wealth over wealth right suleiman alai salam also had but you see the difference between the two and we want and we pray the likes of suleiman alai salam we don't want to be like firon like hamrud like karun like haman no we want to be like the best of the prophets so when hidaya comes you know there is these all turn into blessings otherwise it is all a curse imagine you have the you have a young child into drugs into the wrong things that is a curse there is money and wealth but it is used for the wrong purpose allah keep us on the right track imagine all our lamborghinis our bugattis our mercedes and our rolls royce all if they do not take us to the halaka of the quran if they are not going to the masajids aren't they a curse my dear sisters if they are not if through all this blessings you know if through our bungalows and our villas if it's not reminding us of allah five times a day if it is not keeping us steadfast then it is a curse for us because how long is this life how long are we going to live here 60 years 70 years 80 years 100 years after that what in the eternal life it's only going to be a suffering auzubillah may allah save us and may allah protect us so hidaya is a treasure my dear sisters health beauty whatever it is everything if it is without hidaya it is a curse that same health and beauty you're going to flaunt around you know you'll only show off and call to your own ruin auzubillah leadership without hidaya we are seeing the leadership without hidaya what's happening we are seeing how the nations are being ruined so the greatest niyama is hidaya and the source of this greatest hidaya is what my dear sisters it is nothing but the point number 8 that is the quran right we ask for ihdina surat al mustaqim this quran my dear sisters we ask for hidaya for ourselves for our family for our generations we ask allah to guide us we beg allah to guide us and imagine my dear sisters this hidaya that came upon us you know this hidaya that was revealed to us on on the day of lailatul qadr which came to us which was revealed to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know it it the best angel brought it down on lailatul qadr al quran this hidaya is such this quran is such my dear sisters that the angel who brought it down became the best of angels the night upon which it was brought down became the best of nights the prophet upon whom it was revealed became the best of prophets the umma upon which it was revealed is khaira umma right imagine what will happen if it touches your heart and my heart if it enters into our being and if it runs into our system my dear sisters 
imagine the impact of the Quran. What will happen to our beings? What will happen to us if that same Quran touches us? If it touches our hearts and our minds, what will happen to us? We will become the best of human beings. We will become the best of the people like Allah wants us to be, inshallah. So we allow that Quran to touch us, my dear sisters. Not just the rec recitation of the Quran that does not run down the throat. We want the Quran to, to run into our system. Not just mere rec recitation without understanding. We want the Quran to run into our being, run into our system, run into our bloodstream, run into our veins so that it splits into action. So that it spills into action, inshallah. That is Al-Hidayah. That is the Quran. So we ask for Al-Hidayah. We ask for Istikama. And we are regular with it. Of course, we do the Tajweed, the Tafiz. We do ask all that. But along with that, we have got to do this. That we have to beg Allah to let Quran run into our being and into our systems. Then we move on to the next is Dua and Atkar. I'll take both together nine and 10. That is because we are running short of time and there are still few more points to go. So we, you know, we, we, we do the dua as far as dua is concerned. And as far as our adkar are concerned, we must make it a point to be very particular. You know, my dear sisters, especially as far as the dua is concerned, now, one, one tip again, let me give you in that solid, concrete plan. Five minutes a day, you got to take out. How? How you've got to plan, solid plan, how? When the Adhan is called out, every five times a day the Adhan is called out, are you all able to hear in your respective countries, are you able to hear the Adhan out loud? Yes, Alhamdulillah. What we need to do is that we need to just take a break of one minute. One minute break. In that one minute, what we need to do is we need to just leave everything and repeat the Adhan. Repeat the Adhan. And after repeating the Adhan, there's a Hadith which says that after the Adhan is called out, the the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the gates of heaven and whatever we ask is accepted. Also the dua between the adhan and the ikama is accepted. If we ask at that point of time, Allah will accept the dua. So five opportunities we have in a day, five great chances we have in a day. Keep your dua, dua list ready. Whatever you want to ask, the main two duas, one minute time you, you can give, just one minute you can spare. To repeat the adhan, to, to recite the Adkar after the Adhan. After the Adhan, what do we recite? We, we have to recite that immediately. And immediately we have to make short dua to Allah. Not to lose the opportunity that Allah has favored us with. Right, my dear sisters? That is what we ask Allah. And then immediately we stand up for Salah. Because... Allah loves the act that is done on time. So we leave everything. Our plan of the day has to be such that when the Adhan is called out, I'm just going to leave everything for a minute. Repeat the Adhan. Ask Allah for one or two things. If you have more time, ask for more time. And then stand up for Salah. Inshallah, my dear sisters, this will go a long way in setting our routine. If our Salah is proper, everything else will fall in place, Inshallah. So, uh, as far as all these are concerned, that is the dua, the adkar, morning and evening adkar we need to take care of. That is, for those sisters who still do not know what are the adkar, for them, you know, I request that you can download a, a book by the name the fortress of a believer, the fortress of a Muslim, fortress of a Muslim. 
you can download that if you have the hard copy nothing like it i personally like hisnul muslim fortress of the believer fortress of the muslim i have the hard copy with me all the dua books and the quran i don't like to read online but of course there are many who like to do it online you can download the app and start the duas now my dear sisters i uh, i am afraid you know i will not be able to do to do justice with all the other remaining points so i'll just name the other points and i think i'll continue this next week because i want to deal with the with the concept of the next points in in proper details so i hope that's okay my dear sisters if i just tell you what are the other points uh you can also sister dina you can just browse through them as i say a uh, point number 8 uh, was quran point number 9 is dua point number 10 is atkar and point number 11 is righteous friends and i want to deal in in greater details with this point number 12 is shukar point number 13 is astaghfar where we are going to deal with all the different prophets how they did their astaghfar how they did their tauba and then inshallah we will go to the uh, we will uh, complete all these 13 points so as of now my dear sisters i'll stop at this point number nine of dua and continue with all the other points the next time right for now i'll uh, i will uh, i will uh, share the ppt with you so that you have all the 13 points with you inshallah but we'll complete the points in the next week next sunday inshallah so so that we have a little time for q a and because in malaysia the maghrib adhan is uh, is in the next uh, 25 minutes from now so we'll just keep a little time of 10 minutes for q and a all relevant questions inshallah if we can deal with that so for now i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that may allah guide us may allah protect us and may allah keep us steadfast and constantly guide us with his hidayah so that we do not falter and even if we have faltered oh my lord we return to you with sincere forgiveness from allah and we beg you allah and we ask you oh allah to, to forgive our sins to grant us the best in this world and the best in the year after and to protect us always ameen ya rabbul alamin wa qulu qawli hadha innahu wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum innahu ghafurur rahim so i thank you very much my dear sisters we'll just conclude with a few question and answers for now inshallah and then we'll conclude for the day and the remaining points from point number nine onwards we'll deal with them in in the next uh, week inshallah so hoping that you'll all come again we'll all meet up again and you'll invite others as well inshallah uh, over to sister dina for questions yes sister dina if there's anything we can uh, quickly oh, go not. through um, let me see. Um, there are um, there's a question. I think this is a bit long, but um, maybe you can answer this. Usada, what are the Islamic guidelines for Muslims choosing and selecting a spouse for both Muslim males and females? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that's this is a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting and it's a little out of the box but yeah. nevertheless it's important for for all of us subhanallah uh in uh, when we were in bombay and you know we used to do this special course islamic marriage preparatory course which lasted for a couple of days a week and in that we dealt in detail you know what are what's the criteria and how do we go about selecting and choosing but uh, this sister has specifically asked for uh, she's uh, she she's asking guidelines islamic guidelines for muslims choosing and selecting uh, the spouses for both males and females yeah i think that calls for a talk you know sister but uh, as of now what few tips i can say is uh, uh, point number 1 you know uh, the first point of course uh, uh is that it begins with the most stringent study of the glorious quran you need to know in and out what are the rights and duties of spouses and what 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 does allah speak about in the quran as far as this beautiful relationship is concerned so a stringent study of the quran is a must 
and then of course you need to set criteria what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said the four criteria that our beloved prophet has mentioned right uh, and then after that what is the most important to you if you can you know sit down and mention that and write that and derive from the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that when the prophet said these four criteria why are these four more important the the criteria being piety that is you know virtue wealth beauty and nobility these are the four criteria as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam emphasized on so and out of all four which is the most important our beloved prophet said the most important is what is the most important my dear sisters deen yes virtue yes no uh, uh, taqwa is of the highest importance so that is what needs to be given the highest importance then so if we live up to that you know unfortunately today it's like the world is uh, you know uh, screaming out loud and there's so much over the internet the social media is speaking so much about the different criteria what are you going to look for but subhanallah Islam is very specific. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has made it very clear what should be the criteria for choosing the life partner if you want a successful life. Subhanallah. So we try our best, we do our best, and we put the criteria of taqwa and 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 deen and virtue as the most important, and then we lay the other. Then of course you check whether the whether the person is compatible or not compatible. You you. higher agencies to find out you know there are uh, uh, islamic matrimonials uh, that is also there you can approach them the best is to approach your near and dear ones who can guide you or uh, to get alliances and proposals if that is not possible then you look out for for an for an organization islamic organization that does that out of goodwill and care for the believers around you see if you know somebody who's you know pious and righteous you can put in a word and saying that you know for my daughter and for my son i'm looking or even if the person herself she approaches and says so you put a word of mouth and then as far as selection criteria is concerned within the islamic boundaries islam allows you to look at to talk to within along with the mahrams you can talk to the person to check various things to check whether the person is compatible or not islamic compatibility financial compatibility other things you need to check all that inshallah if that is done and continuously you keep doing istikhara asking allah for whether if it, if this is the best allah put baraka in it if it is not good for the two of you then you both depart so that way inshallah inshallah the process becomes easy but it all begins with if you want real success my dear sisters the most successful stories come from people who are following islam you see the real contentment of heart comes only from the quran and from bowing down to allah so bowing down not mere physically i'm saying bowing in obedience and you know <clears throat> bowing in complete submission that allah i will do it according to how you want me to do it allah my nikah i will not do extravagantly i will do it the way you want me to do it the way the prophet told me to do it so that i get all the baraka of the nikah the worst thing is that you do an extravagant affair and you throw a big huge party where you become the brother of the devil because the spendthrift is the brother of the devil is the brother of the shaitan so imagine my dear sisters you know it's such a sorry state of affairs if that happens and then as an outcome we see the result of you know divorce is increasing broken homes are on the increase uh, you know a common feature of the present economy is lost youth orphan children auzu billah you know we don't want that solid countries need solid foundations of solid families and that comes from solid couples we've got to encourage the halal love making uh you know stuff we've got to encourage and our children to do everything in a halal manner 
and we've got to open things for them so that they are content so that the generations that come they are also happy and they are also righteous inshallah you know if there is unnecessary interference from the in-laws if they are not if the couple is not happy imagine we are we are stamping our own we are putting our own foot in our own mouth it's such a sorry state of affairs you know that some of the families they interfere so much into the into the married couples lives and 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 ultimately you know the the either the daughter in law is 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 sandwiched or the son in law is sandwiched or the son is sandwiched between the wife and the mother such sorry state of affairs imagine the son gets so fed up he doesn't want to go back home because he knows when i go back i've got to balance between my wife and the ma- and my mom so i rather not go i rather stay in the masjid well my dear sisters if he is a righteous person he will stay in the masjid but if he is not a righteous person he is going to find out attraction elsewhere and he is going to find satisfaction elsewhere ultimately who is responsible for this loss we've got to think about that who is responsible for this ruin in the family in fact we got to encourage our children if this is halal nikah is halal let them enjoy in the halal way what they can so that the offspring is also the best with sound mind with best taqwa with iman because if the couple if the young couple is you know is 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 happy and is is enjoying and is connected to allah strongly then the generations will also be connected to allah strongly inshallah inshallah so we hope you know and 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 that there's a lot that can be said you know inshallah uh, allah willing we could have a series of talk inshallah about nikah pre before nikah during nikah and after nikah there could be various uh, uh, you know a uh, uh, series of talk inshallah that we can have because there's a lot that can be said Uh, as far as uh, the entire uh, nikah is concerned in islam but hope uh, those tips uh, you know help my dear sister one or two more questions dina okay um the next one uh, can we combine the niyah of our fast and ayam uh, piyati sorry which is that um niyah of fast i think um, what do you call it uh, the replacement fart. fast the yeah mist. and the missed fast miss fart, fart yeah. and um ayam Deep. yeah uh, that that actually see because one is fard and one is nafil so that is a totally different thing what is mist is the fard which you have to keep scholars have said that majority of the scholars say that you cannot do that where a very few minority have said that yes you can even combine that but i feel it's better not to take a chance it's better to do it separately but for those who find it very difficult you can take the opinion of of those who also agree with that you can combine the niyah of fard with uh with uh, with shawal uh, not of shawal but fard with uh, ayamul bid or uh, the other inshallah so hope that helps sister jazakallah khairan amsada um there's yeah, no more right. question in the chat box so i think we can end our session today okay inshallah so with that uh, we uh, i hope and i pray you know please go through the ppt please share the ppt with your with your family and your children so that you can discuss these points with them my dear sisters and thank you very much jazakallahu khairan kaseeran kaseera to all of you for that patient hearing inshallah we continue with the other points next week have a blessed week have a blessed uh, evening mashallah uh, may allah pour his rahma his baraka upon you upon the children upon the entire umma وَقُولُوا قَوْلِي هَذَا هَذَا إِنَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ إِنَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ جَزَاكَ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا إِنَّ جَزَاكَ اللَّهُ سَرَا سِسْتَرْ دِنَا فَرْ فَرْ دَتْ هَلْپْ تُرُ آوُتْ أَسْسَلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ دُو نَوْتْ فَرْغَتْ تُو پْرَيْ فَرْ آر أُمَّا بِفَرْ يُو دُو يُو أَفْتَار تُدَي مَاي دِيَر سِسْتَرْز سَلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَعَلَيْكُمْ السَّلَامُ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ جَزَاكَ